Alan Adler. Thank Same you. deal, four minutes. Thank you. Well, I can maybe cut off a little time by saying that uh, everything that Krista said at the beginning of her statement, we agree with. Uh, this is an exceptional treaty. Uh, it's it's uh, aim of dealing with issues that clearly resonate in human rights uh, and the necessity to avoid discriminating against people based on their disabilities uh, is correct and extremely important. And that was the reason why we uh, worked as hard as we have uh, to try to be a part of ultimately seeing that this could be successfully adopted. Um, the treaty also is very, has a significance uh, to me as, as a representative of American publishers because its key concept, uh, the core concept of the treaty, is based on an exception that we worked with the National Federation for the Blind to enact in the United States Copyright Act 17 years ago, uh, when no treaty obligating anyone to pursue such limitations or exceptions existed. And that's the notion of authorized entities being the key pivot uh, to provide uh, access to accessible format copies of published works uh, for people not only within the boundaries in which of the country in which the authorized entity is located, but now, of course, under this treaty, to do so uh, cross-border through individuals in other countries as well. Uh, it presented a few problems for us precisely because of the fact that the Chafee Amendment, which is what we call that provision in U.S. law, being 17 years old, now to some people looks a little bit worn. Uh, it, after all, was enacted in the pre-digital environment, and so one of the things that we're looking at in the United States, of course, is how the Chafee Amendment works in this environment. And so the notion that now we were going to take those key concepts in that provision of American law and use them as the basis for creating uh, an international treaty was something that gave us some concerns, whether we were in fact relying on um, concepts, premises that might be a little outdated, or being sure that we were able to make them uh, properly updated to work in the current environment. And because, as you know, publishers are moving towards um, the provision of works in digital forms, uh, particularly digital forms are not embodied in any kind of physical object, not on DVDs or CDs, but that are available through downloading online, there was a great deal of concern, particularly over the elements of how cross-border exchange would work here. And those were the areas, I think, where it's fair to say uh, the publishing community pressed uh, to ensure that there were appropriate safeguards um, based uh, to a large extent as much as possible on the established framework of international uh, copyright agreements that already exist. And that's why we spent a great deal of time, as you know, discussing the three-step test. But as I say, uh, this was an exceptional treaty for all the reasons that Krista said. And for that reason, um, we did understand and we participated to the best of our ability uh, in helping to work out some of the very carefully wrought uh, compromises uh, among participants that were uniquely necessary and appropriate in the context of this treaty in order to be able to see that we could achieve its purposes. Uh, our, we do have some concerns about how people will look at those compromises that were done expressly uh, in order to achieve the purposes of this treaty when they try to extend them into other contexts where we may not have uh, all of the same considerations that are involved in terms of what this treaty was all about. But those are questions for the future. In the meantime, uh, we look forward as publishers in the United States and the Association of American Publishers as a member of the International Publishers Association uh, to working with stakeholders in the United States and in countries all around the world uh, to implement these treaties and to hope that they can be implemented in a workable fashion that will achieve their intended purposes. I'm extremely excited about uh, we now have a treaty. Um, oh, in do I need this? No. Oh, I'm my crisp friend. <laughs> Please do introduce yourself. Oh, sorry. My name is Kudzai Shara. I'm um, from Zimbabwe. I'm a blind person and I'm a lecturer at the university in Zimbabwe. And uh, why, this is exactly why I'm so excited about this treaty because students from my investor are going to benefit much more um, from this. But um, I really want to say that from deep down my heart that uh, this is the, to me I think is the second uh, uh, international treaty human rights instrument that, 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 has been, that has happened in the 21st century, in 13 years, this is 13 years. 
And I'm so excited about that. I, 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 I can't express it enough. I wanted to find out from um, Alan. Uh, Alan talked about um, the agreement that they had 17 years ago, you said, with, yes. uh, with the organizations like NFP. Yes. Um, well, it wasn't an agreement. It was we worked very well, jointly with NFP to enact the exception in US copyright law that uh, created this concept of authorized entities. That's right. My question will still come, so don't. don't. <laughs> uh, because I, I, I just wanted to find out from you what guarantees then that the, because I know that despite that which you did 17 years ago, last year I read the news story in the, I think it was about a court case that NFB took to, I think about uh, some restriction or something. Uh, which then they won, I think, oh, in 2012 in October, I think 12 October, I think, somewhere there. And they, that resulted in uh, uh, universities all over Michigan and stuff uh, making uh, um, um, uh, uh, materials accessible. Yeah? Yes. That's right. the, the so so, so now, what guarantees do we have that uh, with this treaty we are not going to have organizations going to courts all the time when they need a redress of this nature. Uh, because uh, for, 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 as you know, in our countries, in our third world, uh, majority world, um, our organizations are not well resourced, so they will, will not be able to go to court for such issues when they are. Right. So, so maybe you will answer that at some sure. point. Thank you very much. It, it, it's a little bit complicated, but I'll try to be as simple as possible. The, the, what he's talking about is a lawsuit that was brought by the Authors Guild, which is a U.S. organization that, that represents authors, uh, as a class action lawsuit representing authors generally against um, what is called the Hathitrust Digital Library Partnership. And that library partnership consists of over 66 universities and their research libraries, libraries who have pooled their digital collections that they made by digitizing the volumes in their respective libraries so that they now have over two, 10 million volumes of digitized works that they wanted to provide access to the students and faculty in the various universities that are members of the library partnership. The difficulties, we did not, by the way, the, American Associ the Association of American Publishers did not join that lawsuit uh, with the Authors Guild. But the, the reason that the issue was a little bit complicated was because much of the digitization uh, that created the, the uh, collection that uh, is now uh, being governed by the, the Half the Trust Partnership was done by Google. And as many of you may recall, uh, the Association of American Publishers did have five of its members bring a lawsuit against Google seven years ago uh, for basically uh, taking the, the, the works of these publishers uh, that are still under copyright taking them off the shelves of libraries and simply copying them in their entirety into Google's database from which Google planned to uh, offer them to the public in a variety of ways, some that would have been revenue generating, some that would not. So the, the Hathitrust case uh, became, uh, interestingly, the National Federation for the Blind became involved in it because when we tried to settle the preceding Google litigation, uh, I worked with the University of Michigan to write a part of that settlement proposal that would have allowed individuals with print disabilities to be able to access all of the works that Google had digitized without permission, provided that the settlement agreement was ultimately uh, agreed to and uh, governed the way in which that would be done. Uh, but unfortunately, that settlement agreement was rejected by a federal court and so I think what the folks in Half the Trust uh, learned and the National Federation for the Blind who supported the Google settlement because of the provisions that we put in for access by uh, people with print disabilities, they were concerned about the fact that now that the Half the Trust Digital Library Partnership had all of these digitized records, they wanted to make sure that they could have been used in pretty much the same way that we would have had them used under the Google settlement had it been approved. The difference was now you wouldn't have had all the parties agreeing to that use in part of a, as part of a settlement of litigation, so the matter became an issue in litigation itself. And the National Federation for the Blind intervened as a party. 
to argue in favor uh, of allowing individuals with print disabilities to make use of all of those digitized records. Uh, and at the district court level, they won a resounding victory, uh, which is now under appeal. So we have to wait and see what happens to it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, I would like to see a, a, a show of hands because I want to make sure that people who have questions get a chance to, to ask them. I just want to see everyone who wants to ask a question, raise your hand so I can have all, all, all right. And I believe, Jonathan, yeah. did you want to go on this particular? Yes, very, very quickly. And very briefly. Right. So, so with respect to the Hathi Trust case, just a, a couple of additional points. One is that even though it is correct that, that the uh, AAP did not join the litigation directly. It did file uh, an amicus brief, when, now that the case is on appeal, it did file an amicus brief in support of the Authors Guild and against uh, Hathi Trust. Um, and, 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 and as Alan had mentioned, that the, the only access, full text access that is permitted under Hathi Trust is, uh, is to the print disabled. Um, and, and, you know, and the AAP, in its amicus brief, is objecting to that part of the decision. Uh, I also just want to mention, not to put uh, Eric uh, Massan from Reed Elsevier on the spot, uh, but it's also worth noting that in a different litigation, um, uh, Reed Elsevier is actually relying on the hockey trust decision uh, if, in, in a case involving uh, Reed, El Reed Elsevier and uh, uh, and Thompson uh, providing full text access to, you know, you know, lots of subscribers. Uh, so it, it's you know you have one of these situations where you know uh, it, 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 it gets very complicated very quickly. But but uh, we certainly see publishers uh, relying heavily now on this decision because it does provide uh, uh, it is a way forward with respect to digitization. <coughs> Um, and and, uh, and and providing uh, and creation of databases. But if I, if I just may clarify you. one no, thing, no, you no, said. no, no, no. Well, clarify what I said. Let's be no, fair. No, no, no. I'm, I'm not because we've You're got not a fair? few. I'm absolutely not fair. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I just want you to get that on the record. Absolutely. And th those of you who know me know that. <laughs> Final, very brief remarks they would like to make. We have about one one minute and a half left and of course isn't yeah. wasn't that fair? That's fair. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> it's fair and equitable. <laughs> Brief. Brief. Uh, I just want to say, I, I hope that, that you all agree, as I know the National Federation of the Blind in the United States agrees, that these types of regulatory means of ensuring that people obtain uh, accessible format copies so that their disabilities do not prevent them from having the opportunities that others with that disabilities have uh, are only temporary and interim measures uh, because ultimately the marketplaces of the world should serve the need of consumers with disabilities in the same way that they serve the needs of consumers without disabilities. And the U.S. publishing community, although they have been perhaps slower than uh, one would desire to achieve those results, continues to work towards developing their products in a way that will make those products in the marketplace accessible to individuals with print disabilities so that they will no longer have to rely uh, upon regulatory measures for the availability of all of the various published works that they might desire to read and use. So we're all still working towards that goal while we're going to be working towards implementation of this treaty. Okay. Post-treaty world begins to look better and better by the minute. Um, so, um, with that, thank you uh, very much. Thank you to the panelists. I am assuming there are no more burning last comments to be made. The plenary is waiting for us. I'm sure it will start sharply at 3 o'clock.